Hello, and welcome to another day of English 2. I'm your online teacher, Miss Bear. We have been reading about and listening to videos about free speech. Um, the articles that we've read yesterday were related specifically to free speech and social media. This is going towards an argument writing piece um, that we will get to in the next couple of days. Today, we're going to be looking at a couple of additional videos for you to consider and grab some evidence from so that you can strengthen that argument. As a reminder, this is a unit from Common Lit. It is Common Lit's English 10 or English 2's um, Unit 6, Free Speech and Social Media. All of the resources are listed in this unit on Common Lit's website for your teacher to gain access to. At the end of the unit, you're going to be writing an argument. But our essential question is, how do you convince people that you're right? And so that is the core of what we are looking to do with this unit, is convincing someone that your position on students' free speech on social media or whether or not students should be punished for social media posts, um, does that go against that First Amendment right? And then how do you convince someone that your position is the right position? All right, so today you're going to be you're going to be digging into some additional uh, media exploration addressing the question, what should schools consider when addressing student speech online? And so today you're going to need the handout from your teacher that looks like this, what's on your screen. I also have a copy of it here. You're also going to need a pen and or a pencil. It doesn't matter to me what you write with. Your teacher may have um, a preference I don't. And then um, at the end, you're probably also going to need um, your, graph your graphic organizer where you've been collecting the evidence to support your position and your argument. So let's look a little bit more on this activity on what you're going to do. So you are going to view some videos as a whole class. You're going to discuss some questions with your partner and you're going to write your answers individually on your handout. And it says, I will be circulating as you discuss the questions. That's really the teacher in your classroom will be circulating the room, making sure that you are on task. The videos, again, are available on Common Lit's website. I will not be playing them here, but you will pause my video for your teacher to play the video in the classroom and then for you to have that discussion. But again, each person should have their own handout and each person, even though they're, you're going to be discussing this with your partner, each person needs to write their own because at the end of the day, you're not sharing this handout when you get ready to write your essay. You're going to need your own thoughts, but you're using your partner as someone to bounce those ideas off with. So partner work before we get too involved, your teacher's going to play this video and then I want you to um, answer questions one and two with a partner. Why might it be helpful for schools to know what students are saying online and then what is the chilling effect and how might it impact students? I'm going to give you a minute to, to watch the video and then answer those questions. Great job. I know that you guys did a fantastic job answering those questions with your partner. You guys had some really good discussions that went along with that. So next, you have another video. So your teacher's going to play it. After the video, you're going to answer these questions. Watch, I'm sorry, um, do you think it's an intrusion of privacy for schools to monitor the online speech of students who have done nothing wrong offline? And then how might monitoring all students' speech affect some students differently? Those are some really interesting questions. I'm going to give you an opportunity to watch that video and then answer those questions. Remember to keep your own answers to yourself or with your partner. Great job. Those are some really good videos and you guys have some really compelling information that I know that you are adding to that graphic organizer. 
Now, in your packet, there is a chart about cyberbullying and victimization. I want you to look at that with your partner, and there are some questions that you're going to answer. I think it's questions five through seven. Actually, it's five through eight. Um, I want you to answer those questions about that um, cyber victimization chart that you see. Some of that information is very compelling, and your, um, your handout is going to give you some very good questions to deepen your thoughts about analyzing that data. Great job. All right, now I want you to think about um, the Tinker versus Des Moines case about freedom, um, freedom of speech. Judge Fortas said in his decision that freedom of expression would truly not exist if the right could be exercised only in an area that a benevolent government has provided as a safe haven for crackpots. Now, Think about that quote and how could Judge Fortas's description apply to the debate around schools monitoring student speech on social media. I want you to turn and talk with a partner different from the partner you've been discussing with and then write your answers on your handout. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that. Very, very good. Guys, some of you really need to be thinking a little bit more deeply about that Tinker versus Des Moines. Think about how that case, even though it was years ago and it applied to the, um, the armband, that was a silent protest against the Vietnam War, remember? And so how is that different than social media? How is posting on social media differently than that silent protest? And does, does your school have the right to monitor what it is that you're doing? And you should have a compelling argument there um, after reading some of these other cases. Good. The next part of this handout is um, data on how people use social media. It looks at different um, demographics as far as race and ethnicity, as well as age, and it also looks at a person's political affiliation. Now, I don't know that I give a lot of credit to the political affiliation on here, and I'm going to tell you why. Right now, you probably are affiliated with the party that your parents are affiliated with. And that's very normal. That's very natural of where you are right now. But it's not necessarily where you will be as you begin forming your own thoughts and your own opinions. Now, they're always going to be influenced by the people that are around you. But I'm not going to give a lot of credence to that particular piece of this data. But it is interesting to see where a person's affiliation or where they say their affiliation is. So there's some questions to summarize the information, looking at some differences in age groups, as well as um, how people um, use social media. So I want you to analyze that piece um, with a partner and then answer those questions. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Great job. Now, again, just like we did the last time with the last data, I want you to turn and talk with a different partner, and I want you to answer the question. Um, in that article, High School Junior Sues School District for Free Speech Infringement and Win Settlement, Nathaniel Yu was barred from serving as student body president because of his campaign video. So I want you to think more specifically about this case and the charts in parts three and four and what may be at risk for schools that choose to aggressively monitor students' social media accounts. Talk with your partner about that. Again, write your answers on that piece of paper or on that uh, handout that you have. All right, guys, we even have more data. Can you believe that? It is imperative that when you are taking a position 
on a topic that you have as much information as you possibly can in order to make a compelling argument and to prove that you and your position is the right position to be in. So again, uh, this next chart is looking at student views of hate speech on social media. And it gives all kinds of demographics, male, female, um, Democrat, independent, Republicans, all kinds of different ideas and information in this chart. Again, with a partner, I want you to answer the questions after you're analyzing that data. All right, good job. Now, we are at the end of you working with a partner. You're gonna do something independently next. So, thinking about all of the things that we have read today, the data that we've looked at, the videos that we've watched, I want you to think about what should schools consider when addressing student speech online. I'm gonna give you, or your, you and my, me and your teacher are gonna give you about five or 10 minutes to respond to that prompt on your handout. Good job. Guys, that is preparing you for your writing on that uh, final essay and that argument. I know you guys have some amazing information there, and now you're gonna have an opportunity to have a whole class discussion about what you wrote and those ideas. So when you want to share out, raise your hand, but based on the videos and the data, what should schools consider when addressing student speech online? I'm gonna give you a chance to answer that question in your class. That was a fantastic discussion that you guys had. And I know some of you have some more thoughts that you want to share and you may have run out of time and that's okay. Take those thoughts and write them down. Take the thoughts of your classmates and write those down so that when you get ready to write this argument essay, you've got some compelling information. You've got some information not only for your side, but for the opposite side to that counterclaim. Okay, so that is all that we have for today's handout. But if you have some additional time, there are some questions that, that Common Lit has given us to extend that class discussion. But here's the end all be all. These questions are great questions to extend that conversation. You don't have to have the discussion just in your classroom. These questions you can be talking to your friends about in the hallways, on social media, or in person, however you want to have that discussion. But I'm going to leave this up for just a second so your teacher can pause if they want to continue this conversation in your classroom, or if you want to write down some of those questions to be thinking about yourself um, over the next couple of days while you are preparing for this argument writing piece. All right, guys, that is a fantastic job for today. We dug in and we got so much more information for our argument writing piece on whether or not schools should be able to punish students for their social media posts. That is all for today. Until next time, happy reading.